Danny, I hope you're doing well. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Ryan, and I hope it's not raining like it is down here in Mobile. Yeah, we've had to have the uh, the the water boots on today. It's 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 been uh, pretty pretty crazy, but uh, you guys seem to always get a lot of that bulk of that rain, and uh, hopefully everything's okay down there. Let's talk. Yeah, some... We get it first, and we'll send it to you. Hey, we we we, we don't mind the rain, but uh, today has been a has been a unique one. It's a lot of a lot of different flooding, but it's starting to dry out. But uh, we uh, same here, same here. We want to spend a little time talking about Alabama football. The rankings last night uh, at number two, Alabama maintains that spot. As you look at this college football playoff ranking, uh, do you have any problems with any of these rankings in that initial front five? Well, yeah, I would think most people do if they follow college football, and that's Iowa. Iowa has a great team. I've used them a few times this year, and they've really played well, but through no fault of their own, they haven't played anyone. They may be dynamite, but the bottom line is, they would be an underdog, Ryan, to every team in the top, I don't know, 15 or even higher, but at least 15. So you can forget about the top 10. They'd definitely be an underdog to them. And it'll be interesting to see. I guess the only tough test they have, the only team is they end the season next week at Nebraska. And they'll be a slight, maybe two and a half, three point favorite. But yeah, I would think that would be the consensus. Iowa should definitely, they should not be number five. If if you want to put them number 10 or something like that because they're undefeated, okay. Because then the season will play out, and you'll know if, if they if they run the table, win the championship game, the Big Ten championship game, well, then I have no problems with them at all. But right now, nah. How are they justifying hey, that ranking? I mean, I'm just curious what you think. I mean, why are they there at number five? I don't know. I guess they're being politically correct. I can't tell you that. That's a $64,000 question, Ryan. I just know they shouldn't be there. Maybe it's because... You know, maybe they put a lot of credence in being undefeated. I don't. I mean, I do if you play a schedule like Alabama or Ohio. Well, Ohio State doesn't play anyone. But if you play a schedule like Alabama, hell yeah, being undefeated is pretty prominent. Certainly a lot. It's like, uh, I think you would agree, it's much harder to go 9-1 and with Alabama's schedule than to go, say, 10-0 and with Clemson's schedule. Would that be a fair statement? Oh, sure it is. Sure. Yeah, so, you know, what, what, so... What's more important to the committee? You tell me. Being undefeated, is that more important than a team's strength of schedule? And uh, and if they've had one loss, but, you know, if your schedule is less and you're undefeated and your schedule is much, much tougher and you only got one loss, explain it to me. They just, you know, it's just, they, who knows, it's politically correct stuff, I guess. And, and at the end of the year, they'll, you know, the last one, they'll pull a rabbit out of the hat like they did last year, which really caught me off guard. Not that Ohio State wasn't deserving, but, you know, how do you drop a, I think TCU is, what, number three, and they won 52-3 to three against Iowa State or some, you know, weak team. But, hell, punished them for that, anyway, and rewarded Ohio State. Danny, what do you think about Alabama's ranking there at number two and, and sort of your evaluation of the Crimson Tide so far? Well, I would think, you know, as far as number two, you just got to be in the top four. I thought, like a lot of people, again, in a fair world, I would have probably Ohio State and Alabama ranked ahead of Clemson. I think Clemson's done. They've got a great football team. And Alabama or Ohio State, if they played each other, they'd be even. If they played Clemson, both would be about a three-point favorite. Doesn't mean they'd win, but I'd put both of them ahead of Clemson based on I think Ohio State has a better team. And Alabama has a much tougher schedule. But that's my thought. As far as Alabama, how do you beat them? you got to have a dual-threat quarterback runner and a passer like Ole Miss and like Tennessee. Of course, Tennessee almost beat them. And you need a good offensive line. And if you've got those things, you're in pretty good shape. And I might add that a lot of people are not circling the wagons, but they think that this Auburn game is going to be a piece of cake. I don't think so because Auburn, I'm assuming Sean White plays. Johnson has been a real surprise to me. But Sean White, he's an accurate passer. He's not a bad runner. Auburn has a very good, even if they haven't looked like it, they have a Really good offensive line. Defense is so-so. But I think Sean White's going to be a great quarterback for Auburn. I don't know how if he's, he's still injured. don't know if he'll play. But it's not going to be a cakewalk if he's healthy and he does play because I think they'll move the ball in Alabama because of those two reasons. When you look back at Auburn, you were one of those back in August uh, reminding us that Auburn uh, would at least, at least three games this fall. Uh, 
I know at that point, not a lot of people, everybody were picking Auburn to go back to possibly to, uh, uh, to the playoffs or, or be in the – not in the playoffs, but but as far as you know, winning the SEC West, uh, winning the SEC. Uh, but you had them at three losses, and uh, you were correct. What went wrong for the Auburn Tigers? Well, first of all, before you get into that, I mean, definitely caught a lot of heat. And, you know, it's like the old – not a lot of people, but just unfortunately a small segment they – you're just saying that because you're an Alabama graduate. No, well, I really meant it. I said that, and I think if you think about it, it certainly made sense to me. LSU and Arkansas, I said they'll lose one or both those games, probably both revenge games on the road. Both of them are as good as Auburn, and they did lose both of them. I said they'd lose to Ole Miss at home because Ole Miss is a better team, another revenge game for Ole Miss. Then I said they'd lose to either Alabama or Georgia or both. Well, obviously they didn't lose to Georgia, so... I don't think it was a great prediction. When you said what went wrong, Jeremy Johnson, he just did not, like everyone thought he would, he didn't step in for Nick Marshall. If he would have, then you're talking about a different you know, a different team, except defensively, I ex- they're average, but I expect them to be a little bit better, and they are. But still, they have an average defense. You're only as good as your players. Take all the Alabama coaches and give them Auburn's defense, and they would not be happy campers. So that's the way I thought about Auburn. And pretty much the same last year. I just thought the schedule was a little bit different last year. The schedule was just too tough. But yeah, Johnson was has been a big surprise. But again, I'm I think that Sean White's incredible if he's healthy because he could pass the ball. But he's a freshman, and he can also run it too. He's not a runner like Nick Marshall, but he can move that offense defensively. That's another story. When you get to the Auburn Tigers, do you see this as long term? I mean, is this something that? Uh, that, you know, because of people, maybe they've caught up with their offense because I think that's the most concerning part as far as just their offensive numbers. I know you talked about Jeremy Johnson, but do you see this long term? What's uh, the problems, the issues there? Or do you think Gus Malzahn can fix this? Well, I don't see it long term because I happen to think that, as I said, they have a good offensive line, a very good offensive line. They have very good running backs. Granted, they don't have a Derrick Henry, but they got some studs back there. They got some really good receivers. It's just that. They don't have a trigger man, and if White is healthy, uh, you'll see a different team in two weeks. At, you know when they play Alabama, uh, Johnson is just a mystery. I mean, he looks like he's gifted, looks like he has all the tools, but I guess it's in his head, his confidence. He just doesn't have the confidence because he surely he looks like me on a lot of those passes. But I don't see them having a long term problem. He just need to have a quarterback, and Sean White, unless he gets injured, is their quarterback of the future. He looks pretty good to me. Looks a lot better than anything, I don't mean this the wrong way, that Alabama has. I mean, Alabama's uh, coming up. I, they've got some guys that are supposed to be good, but White is really, again, it's, it's an overstatement, but he's impressed me. Uh, Coker has played very well, played within the system. Um, I think it's great. He's not afraid to take a lick and you know hold the ball to the last minute to get a receiver open. have a problem with Coker uh, not looking for a secondary receiver. It looks like he panics if the first guy's covered, but... They've given it's been a real good game plan. Alabama has a great offensive line, obviously solid at running back. These real good receivers. So I don't know. If that answered your question, Ryan. I was all over the board on that one, but I wouldn't sell off right now with Sean White. And it's easier to build a team around a quarterback than it is, than you could take a great team. Take Alabama, they're a great team. Take away Coker, they got some problems. You think Alabama won the national title? Mm, I. I would say the odds are against it. Uh, they're good enough to win it. I think the best team on paper, haven't played like it, is definitely Ohio State. They have unbelievable talent. you got Cordell Jones back. Now he's got a bunch of games under his belt. And uh, Barrett's obviously a very good quarterback, so you're really in good shape there. Miller, he could, if they had to, he could quarterback, but he's obviously their receiver. But they just got a ton of talent. They're as talented. Uh, I'd say they're the most talented team on paper in the country at every position. When I say every position, comparing them, say, to Alabama, doesn't mean they're the best team in the country. It's very tough. I mean, it's a really tough draw. One of the things that's going to matter to Alabama, if I were Alabama, I would want to be number one or number four. I would not, and this is as of today, I would not want to play Ohio State. I would not play in, mind playing Clemson. And they're very good. That's not a knock on them. And I wouldn't mind playing Notre Dame. But if I'm any team out there, and I think you would agree, Ryan, I don't want to catch Ohio State. And it's very possible that Ohio State could lose. I don't think they'll lose this weekend. But it's very possible they could lose to Michigan. I don't think they'd lose to Iowa. 
And if they run the table, that would be the guarantee. They've had a they've had a Vanderbilt Kentucky schedule every other week until you know this week. So that means an awful lot when you don't have a lot of injuries, like Alabama has a few injuries, and that's what I'd want to do. I'd want to be number four or number one heading into that playoff, so I could avoid them. I know we're nine or ten days away from the Auburn Tigers. What would be the early line on this game? Uh, the early line is 14. Ohio State, by the way, is about a six-and-a-half point favorite over Michigan. And Iowa, they would be a slight favorite in two weeks against Nebraska. That's the only team that can beat them, during, obviously, during the regular season. Probably the best team they've played. Nebraska could beat them. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Florida's about a five- to six-point favorite over Florida State. And Oklahoma would be, if they win this weekend, they will be a, which I think they will, uh, they will be about a four- to five-point favorite at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma's probably, they're, re- they're, they're definitely deserving of a top four. At this point in the season, I'd say they're better than Notre Dame, but let's see how Notre Dame shakes out They uh, in the season at Stanford. They'll be just a very slight underdog there, maybe two, two-and-a-half. So you said Alabama would be a 14-point favorite over Auburn right now? At least a 14-point favorite over Auburn. If Auburn puts in a la- last week or the week before, it was 13 and a half. Week before that or two, it was 12 and a half. It goes up if Auburn has a real bad performance against Idaho. I mean, Idaho is horrible. It doesn't really matter what Alabama does. They could Alabama could win, you know, 30 to 20, and it wouldn't matter because everyone knows that Bateman's going to play and that Alabama's going to rest everybody, run a vanilla offense and defense. You know, Charleston Southern is just a warm-up game where you hope you don't have any injuries. But, uh, yes, right now they're 14. If Auburn plays bad against Idaho, they'll open a little bit higher, maybe 15 or 16. I would say 14 would be a good number. And for those that think it ought to be 21, you're dead wrong. At least I think you are. 